Okay. All right. Hey guys, welcome to the Never Nag Again Challenge. I am so excited to be here with each and every one of you. So um, I'm going to wait a little bit, let you guys come on in because I know how excited you guys are for the Never Nag Again Challenge. And as we're waiting, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit and kind of give you a preview of what this auto settle training challenge can do and i'm super excited to show you so this is some video um that here let me shrink myself first so you guys can see here here is where the previous would be at right so here we are this was taken on my phone and let me actually make this a little smaller you guys can see a bit more there we go and here is what the final behavior looks like, okay? So the goal is for your dog to be out in public and to just be calm, not necessarily take notice to a lot of things and just settle down. You can take a nap, you can just chill and be a good dog. This is the end final behavior. Now here, I'm eating dinner, watching Seinfeld, I think. <laughs> and Reaver is down here at my feet, settling. This is what the final behavior looks like. Sitting down, eating a pork chop, pork chop. Dog's just chilling. And every once in a while, I will reinforce him for that very specific behavior. Head down, relax, not moving around, not focusing on my food, not focusing on his treats, ready for the next treat, right? This is a proper settle. And the amazing part is, is that, do you hear me telling him to settle at all? Let's watch that again. Do you hear me at all? Barking any cues at him? No. No, you don't. And this is where the never nag again comes in to play, especially for you guys. I don't care if you're here with your own dog looking to learn this behavior or if you're just trying to see what, you know, real proper service dog behavior looks like. He is, I believe, nine weeks old, nine or ten weeks old in this video that I took. OK, I want to show you the process and what you need in order to accomplish this behavior. In addition, as we're going to be going on and talking about this behavior, don't forget in your workbook, right? The only way to get this is by registering for the workshop. And it's if you've registered, I've already sent it to your email. So in the back of this book, there are more detailed training plans about each of the uh, never nag again challenges we'll be doing, right? So back here is a more detailed training plan on how to teach your dog to auto settle if you need more of that visual written instruction. And there's also some good stuff in here that I also don't necessarily include in this training. So it's going to be helpful for you to go back and review. Okay. Um, tomorrow we'll also be going over some stopping your dog pulling. Day after that, auto attention and focus. So if your dog just is struggling with any distraction, we're going to change that distraction into a cue to look at you. And we're also going to be going on to auto leave it. And all of this builds up on each other. So if one of these look interesting, you have to make sure you follow all of the auto games because they all build up on each other. Okay. All right. So how did we get this behavior from Reaver? I'm not nagging him. I'm not telling him any specific cue to do this behavior. It's automatic, right? If your dog doesn't leave your food alone and he doesn't just settle down like this, listen up <laughs> because you can change this food as a cue to lay down and settle. Okay. So let me pull up the next video. And um, before we get too, too much into settle, I want to get into some other things too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> here, here um, I'm explaining a little bit more about um, what you want to teach your dog, right? So when you first get a puppy, this is, this is, 
more specifically just to puppy parents, the first two behaviors, first three behaviors I, ch I teach my dogs is, is settle. Settle is a huge one. But the other two, which are super, super important, are a hand touch, come and touch my hand when I need you to come towards me because that helps build a better trust than you having to go chase after your dog, right? That's that's gonna be more likely to break bonds than it is to build bonds. So if you wanna build bonds, teach your dog to come and touch your tip of your fingers. And um, if you want the other, the, the, the last behavior, right? So there's settle, there's come touch my fingers. And the last behavior, which can help to continue to build bonds with your new puppy is to drop things on cue, right? There's a million DIY how to's for positive reinforcement training and how to teach a dog to drop things and to come. Um, I don't I don't really need to go over that today because all this training here is much more specialized stuff that people tend to really struggle with. So I'm here for that really specialized stuff, not the common things that you could typically find on YouTube to find. OK, so also touch and drop it on cue is important because many people just pull toys out of their dog's mouth and that is going to break your bonds of trust as well. So a really strong drop cue is extremely important, especially when you have a puppy because they want to shove stuff in their mouths all the time, all day. So that drop cue becomes extremely important to you be using, usually at least on an hourly basis because puppies are busy. <laughs> puppies are busy, okay. Um, so with that being said, here is another example of Reaver doing his settle, right? Sound is now on. I have some desensitization music going on in the background. There's some sirens and other stuff going on. But look at this, right? If we're saying we want a settled behavior, I'm looking for my dog not to be twitching, not to be moving around, to be completely solid in their relaxed state, right? You see how solid he is. He's not moving. He's not moving his head. He's not switching his hips. He's not agitated, right? This is what you want to reinforce. Now, also notice right here, I'm gonna rewind this so you can see. Right here, when I start to give him this treat, I want you to listen really closely. If you hear any crinkling of a bag for me reaching for a treat. No, do it again. No, right? So when you're doing this behavior, it's extremely important for you to be silent. You need to be like a ninja when you are grabbing your dog's reinforcer and delivering it straight to their mouth. You see how I'm keeping it straight onto his mouth. I'm not delivering it on the floor. As a service dog, I don't want my dogs eating off of the floor. I will make exceptions for Kongs, okay? But typically I feed them in a crate with a Kong occasionally outside the crate, but I don't make a huge habit out of that, right? So as a general rule, I do not feed my dogs off the floor. And why is that? Because when you're out in public, what you do inside your home, right? If your dog's eating up after things that you dropped on the floor when you're cooking or after you ate, right? If your dog, if your, if your dog is making that a habit, it's going to be, that's going to bleed out and transfer into your public access skills, okay? So it's gonna be really, really hard if you go to a restaurant or any place with ki any kind of food, or maybe you're just in a normal store and there happens to be food on the ground. If your dog is used to eating food off the floor, if they learn that habit early on, right here, Reaver's eight weeks of age, right? If they learn that habit, it becomes much, much more difficult to do an automatic leave it, which we will be doing in a couple of days. Hello, Alexandra, nice to see you here. Angela, you made it. Emily, you made it. So nice to see you guys here. Someone else is here, nice to see you. Remember to give StreamYard permission so I can see who is here uh, with us live. Um, all right, so directly to the hand, directly to the face, don't give the tree on the floor, don't feed your dog off the floor, clean up after yourself on the floor so your dog doesn't steal items off the floor. Because again, that's going to bleed out into your training and make it 10 times more difficult when you're out in public for your dog to leave things alone off the ground. Okay, so that's some starting right now. Also, I want to address this thing here. Do you see this long S shape 
kind of leash, right? It's attached to the chair that I'm sitting on. And again, this is really important to get started when your dog's a puppy, because when they're older and they're bigger, it can be that much harder to start this, this tie down training, okay? So this is known as a tie down. This is a four foot tie down that I have for my dogs. And I actually, um, there's a very specific one that I actually ordered this from Amazon. Uh, if you guys are looking for the link for that, just let me know. I do have uh, an entire puppy list of things that I recommend for young service dog puppies, as well as pet dog puppies. So if you wanna purchase that directly from my Amazon affiliate link, I can just send you that link and you can order it directly from Amazon, okay? So this is a four foot cable tie down. It's a metal cable surrounded by PVC plastic so that the dogs can't chew through it, all right? Now your dog shouldn't be attempting to chew through it. If they are, we need to restart and introduce this the correct way. So when we're first starting this, a lot of people are saying they want the list. Okay, I will make sure to get the link to the list to you guys later on. Um, so when we're first starting this, let's pull up some more. Let's pull up some more video here. This is what you want to be doing. Oh my God, he's so cute and small. <laughs> he's so cute and small. So you, you, I'm sure many of you are familiar with what this item is. This is a Kong toy. If you have a pink or a blue Kong toy, those are specifically made for puppies. They are, are of a lighter, fluffier, chewier material. Okay, and you can also see back here, this is his cable tie down. I've attached it to a uh, large, um, what's it called, chest filled with a lot of old DVDs. So it's, it's pretty heavy. So I, we have it attached to a large chest. I have it attached to his harness. And this is how you wanna properly introduce a tie down to your dog. If your dog is used to being around your house and just doing whatever it wants to do and you're having problems with your dog stealing shoes, stealing items, playing keep away games with those items, not bringing that item to you. If they don't know how to settle in the house and act appropriately and calm, if they're barking through a window, right? All of those behaviors are going to bleed out and affect your service dog training. So it's better to start in the home, prevent these behaviors occurring by teaching them how to settle calmly and happily throughout the day on a tie down, right? Um, Reaver can settle on a tie down right here next to me by my chair all day long when I'm working, right? Your dog should be able to do that as well. So you introduce it by attaching your dog to it. Make sure they don't hit the end of that tie down. That's a huge step. That's a super important step not to hit the end immediately, but you can show them and gently add pressure saying, okay, hey, look, it's tight. You can't go anywhere. Here's a Kong. Introduce yourself. Here's the Kong. Stay there. This is a place where we want you to be. So let's watch Reaver do his little Kong thing here. Right. Oh, I guess that was his first one too. And it keeps them in that space and place to um, for a longer period of time without you having to constantly reinforce retreats, right? Now, so you've got your four foot tie down. I suggest with these tie downs to have several places and have little stations for settling with your dog. One of my stations is right here with my work chair. Another station I have upstairs is right in front of the TV so I can see my dog and the television so I'm not distracted and not pay attention to my dog. Because when you don't pay attention to your dog when you're doing this, if you don't know what they're doing, it's gonna be that much harder to reinforce and that much more difficult to train your dog. So always have an eye on your dog, be aware of what they're doing, make sure they're not getting frustrated when you're starting this training. So what do these stations look like? You probably want to have two to five, depending how big your house is, uh, five of these different stations. And the things that you need for these stations, let me show you real quick. Here's the next video. This is what you need, right? You got your tie down, you got your bed. A really comfortable bed is essential when you're first starting. Some dogs don't like to lay down on cold, uncomfortable floor and you have to teach them how to do that. And in order to start, get your station, make it comfortable, 
practice, practice, practice. Be that ninja delivering that treat very quickly and quietly and give them stuff to do. <laughs> he wanted to chew up on his toys, give them their Kongs, let them eat their meals from their Kongs. It's not just for treats, it's for their meals too, right? And make an enjoyable place to be. What are you doing? Oh my God, he's so cute. Oh Lord, hello, hello. <laughs> Oh my God, I love him. I mean, fantastic puppy, um, at least for me. I'm sure many other people would struggle a lot with this particular puppy, um, but he's definitely he was definitely the right puppy choice for me. So this is what I mean by creating these stations, these settle stations for your dog in the house. In addition to that, one more thing I would add is a little plastic container or even a Dixie cup out of the reach of your dog, somewhere where they can't get it, maybe in a drawer, maybe somewhere way up high where they literally will not ever be able to get it, right? Depending how high your dog is. Um, and feeding their food to them throughout the day for calmly sitting and laying down. Now, dogs sleep a lot during the day. You have a lot of opportunity to reinforce this behavior. Okay, dogs need, I believe, anywhere from like 16 to 18 hours of sleep a day. Adult dogs do, puppies need more. And you need to make sure you're capitalizing on this opportunity to teach them and encourage them that when you're around in this specific instance, when you're tied down, when you can't go anywhere, because it kind of mimics that of a leash when you're out and about, that you need to, needs to transfer into that calm, automatic settle. Okay, now when you're doing this, you're gonna have to do it a lot, right? If I'm telling you that you need to do this with your dog's kibble and your dog's food throughout the day, you know, this is, this is how they learn. In order to learn, they need to earn. In order to earn, you gotta learn, <laughs> okay? So this might be happening. You might take 50 to 100 reinforcements of this behavior every single day to really get your dog on a roll. And again, they can't be shifting their head, they can't be moving around. Um, and I would count to anywhere from 30 seconds to 60 seconds before actually quietly picking up that kibble and rewarding it directly into your dog's mouth. Again, we don't want these dogs eating off the floor, right? We don't wanna build these bad habits. If your dog already has that bad habit, we're gonna have to backtrack a bit. And it might take two or three times longer for you to do that backtracking, but you can still get there. Right, you're just going to have to stay dedicated for a little bit longer. Um, so that's what the setup looks like. Now, what does that look like when we are out and about? Here we are sitting outside of a Starbucks. I've got a little comfortable pad for him. He's right next to his crate, which he traveled in at the time. He's got his tie down, which is a leash which he learned not to chew on. That's very important. Because again, if your dog starts chewing on the tie down, it can be very likely to transfer over to your leash. So again, introducing the tie down correctly is extremely important so your dog doesn't chew through a leash. And of course, I've got a little chewy for him here too, right? So I have already, we are out at Starbucks. This was last, this was fall. This was fall last year. And we just, I went to Starbucks, I got myself a treat, I got myself some work to do, um, and I was there making sure I could teach him how to settle in a new environment. And he sat right down on his mat, started getting to chew. And this is the best way to start. Use something that they can chew on and stay, keep their attention on um, while you're doing this. Now, I also use this video clip to show how he responded to a dog barking because somebody else brought their pet there, right? Um, and that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna meet people who also have pets. You're gonna be first practicing in an area that's pet friendly until your dog meets certain criteria, at least in my program you are, until your dog meets certain criteria to start doing your public access training, okay? So, got a dog barking, this is a problem, right? Bark, 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 his ears went back, did you see that? Ears go back, gets up a little agitated, ears go back again, trying to focus in what's going on. I reinforce him for staying there, staying calmer, not totally freaking out. And guess what he does? He's like, oh, we're doing the same thing. Oh, there's my Chewy. I'll just go back, 
eat my chewy and calm down. Okay. So do you see how we work through that bit of tension with Reaver? All right, and that's gonna happen. There's gonna be dogs that are barking with you for this. Now, and when you restart by going outside, you wanna make sure you have that Kong, you have that Chewy, something that you know is going to keep their attention the entire time. If not, you need to make sure you find that thing, okay, in order to start. And of course, reinforcing with your dog's food or their kibble as you continue going on, all right? Okay, so let's see, I think, that is pretty much it. I have some more here. Just, just more video of him settling in his little area with his bed and his toys, keeping himself occupied. And really what this does is help prevent them from causing problems in the home. If your dog already causes problems in the home, we need to backtrack a bit, right? We need to build on that and practice this settling throughout the day really have it strong. Once your dog is really good in the home, then I would start looking at finding some low distraction places outside where there's practically no dogs or people or other animals to distract your dog and just practice that super low distraction environment, right? And that's where I would start. You got to build up on it. Of course, puppies learn faster than adults. So if you have a young, young puppy, get started on this right away and capitalize on your dog's learning and growth period for them to be able to do this because you are going to be able to hit the ground running with your young puppy and get to where you want to go much, much, much faster. So don't miss out on that opportunity, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go come on in. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna make myself bigger. I'm gonna check it on the comments, see what's going on down in the chat here. Yeah, Carol's here, Danelle's here, hello, lesson video two. Yeah, so Carrie, you want the link? Let me make sure I send that. So, um, puppy Amazon list, we want Carrie. Carrie wants it, Angela wants it. Alexandra wants it, Carol wants it, okay. And it's Diane, hello Diane, nice to see you. Yeah, Nikki, baby, baby Reaver is super, super cute. Emily, yes, you can get that as well. Patty wants the list too, all right. I'll just, you know what, I'll just send the list to everybody. How about that? And, and, and James, and James Donnell. Everybody wants it. Awesome. List. Facebook user. I don't know who you are. <laughs> you got to give streamer permission so I know who you are. Okay. So I hope this was really helpful. Um, if you guys, again, you want to make sure, go back into your email. Everybody who's registered for the workshop, you will have, what's, what is the list? Oh, Allison. Allison, what the list is all the items and the objects that you use, especially the four foot tie down specifically that I like to use, right? Okay, so as a reminder, more detail for the first Never Nag Again challenge is in the back of your workshop packet. Everybody who has registered for a workshop has gotten one of those. So make sure to check your email. And if it's not in your email, check your spam folder. And if it's still not there, reach out to me over Facebook Messenger and I will personally make sure that you get it, okay? Um, Alexandra says, Alucard is super, super weird inside. I'm trying to teach him to relax or to at least to refocus. He's very bouncy, but food motivated. I have, well, this is, this is a great question. Uh, I have a hard time getting him to be interested in the Kong as well as chews that take a while to eat or are inedible. Should I get a tie down with edible puppy chews? So if your dog is having a problem with these chews, right? My question is, is that where he's getting his main meals from? Is he currently eating out of a food bowl? And my question to you is why, right? So uh, Dr. Ian Dunbar, he's a dog trainer slash uh, person trainer out there, and he's been around for years, right? He professes that the number one most useless item you can ever own for your dog, 
especially if it's a service dog, is a food bowl. I happen to agree with him, and here's why. Because especially if your dog's a young puppy or if your dog is still learning how they need to be acting, you cannot miss any opportunity to teach your dog how to interact with the world. Until your dog is trained and you are satisfied to where it needs to be, your dog needs to be working for their meals. Whether that's through a training session, throughout the day when you're doing your auto settle homework like you will be here, or whether that's through engagement toys like Kong or different kind of brain toys, right? And it's, it's, it is extremely important for service dogs in particular to eat through these brain toys or these enrichment toys to help them learn to work through any kind of struggle and to be persistent, right? And to use their brain. It's an extremely important tool for these dogs to have. Uh, Alexander says, I usually hand feed him. I give my, I gave my food bowl to my terrified rescue dog. Good. So he's not eating out of a food bowl. Awesome. That's a great start. My mom made some homemade dog food. So I might put that into a Kong today and let you know how it works out. Right. So um, the homemade dog food is definitely going to be a super high value food item. I would start with your dog. I mean, I, I would want to talk to you more about that, Alexandra. Um, about his feeding schedule because some dogs can be overfed and when they're overfed they're going to turn their nose up at a lot of things and be like mm, I don't really want that you know I would rather have like something super super high value right now and you know your dog's supposed to be working I mean they're working dogs they should be working for their food out and about in public not just in the home right so I would love to kind of walk you through that and see uh, what you've got going with that. So let me just make sure we can touch base on that. Uh, Carrie says, we recently introduced to frozen beef marrow bones as a high quality chew. How do you feel about that? As long as they're not, um, as long as they're not like, uh, what's the word? Roasted or baked or smoked, as long as it's none of that. I mean, you should be fine, right? Um, some of them that have been roasted or baked or smoked, they can crack and they can have large shards that fall off of that. So it's it's something you just have to watch out for where you get those beef bones from, okay? I would just be careful. And yeah, that's fine, especially if you're starting from scratch and really early on, you can start off using that, all right? As long, again, as it's not smoked. Emily says she has to go. Well, thank you so much for coming. I'm so glad it was really helpful for you, Emily. So glad. All right, so um, I would love, personally, I would love to see you guys practicing this. Please, I want to see the entire Service Dog Prep Facebook group flooded, absolutely flooded with video of you practicing your subtle behavior. So remember the criteria, it's all back here in your workbook. Um, again, if you need one of these and you've already registered, I will send it to you. If you haven't registered, just let me know and we'll get you registered for the workshop. But um, you know, again, you need a couple things. You can start without the tie down. You can jump right into this right away. It might be a little bit more difficult because your dog might wander and try to find something else to do, but that's okay. Order your tie down and it'll be easier from there on uh, once you introduce that the right way. Okay, but I would still, I would love to see you guys flooding the Facebook group with you practicing this challenge today. Okay, I would really love to see where you're at and remember, you have to be a ninja, really important steps, right? First, have your food ready. Usually I have it on my desktop here or I'll have it quietly in my um, pants pocket. You can even have a treat bag if that's easier for you because you have your dog's entire meal in that food pouch, right? Um, and then just quietly grab a piece, deliver it directly to their mouth, be total ninja, no crinkling bags, no popping open lids, right? You need to be 100% quiet because that will, if you, if you have those sounds occurring, that can end up becoming a cue for the dog to look up and be like, oh, I'm getting reinforced for that, 
right? And we don't want that to happen. We don't, we don't want that to happen at all. So it's really important for you to be a quiet ninja. Okay. And then of course, deliver it, delivering it directly to the mouth, not on the floor, because we don't want our dogs to be, have a habit of starting to eat off the floor, because that's going to later affect the training that you do down the road out in public. So start off in the house, make sure your dog can settle with you nearby you all day in those very specific settle areas. Some good areas are in front or near the TV, uh, tied down to the chair that you're sitting on. And for larger dogs and breeds, um, you have to end up finding so, uh, um, a place where you can anchor an eye hook into the wall so you can hook your dog up to there. Okay, that's the only way because some dogs are just so big um, in order to get started on this behavior. So it's a, it is a lot easier when they're puppies. They sleep a little bit more and they're much smaller. But other than that, that's how you would start get started. Carrie says we started the tie down last week. She's tied down right now. Awesome. <laughs> How's she doing with her settling? Uh, great place to start. Um, and remember just to feed directly into the mouth, not on the floor. All right, guys. So that's it. I'm going to um, go ahead and send out the the lists for where you can get the tie down and all the puppy stuff that I use, that I personally use for my dogs. If you're interested in purchasing any of that from Amazon, yes, she's doing it very well. That's awesome, Carrie. That's fantastic. That is great. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. And I will see you at, I, I already sent out the email, but I will see you at seven o'clock. Um, so go check your email and get that personal Zoom link because we'll, I'll be there to help you answer any of the questions, go over the homework, help you fill out some of the blank spots which are in the workbook, and just kind of go over what happened during the day and help you answer any other questions, all right? Thank you, Angela. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Carrie, Emily, Alexandra, Millie, Allison. Danelle, um, Nikki, Diane, Carol. I think I think that's everybody who's commented. All right, thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. I'll be going live tonight at 7 p.m. And then again tomorrow, we will be going live again, 12 o'clock and two o'clock. Don't miss it. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.